Hi, uh, we left off previously sometime last year, which is not hard right now, uh, with the to run conversion. And today I'm going to fill you in with a few details about the battery pack. Let's go. So, what we see here is two Nissan leaf packs. Some more right here, and then most of it right here. And along with it, I got one set of connectors. And but I will not be able to reuse them as is because I will always be paralleling two uh, cells. So the actual connecting parts will be like this, spanning four poles, and. Each cell is like two um, two cells in series, so we have to connect the center tab as well to keep them balanced. Yeah, so I'm gonna need uh, 40 of these and another 40, I guess, of the shorter ones. And they, of course, have the same dimension as the original leaf connecting bars. Uh, there's going to be 28, a row of 28, so that's the row you see here, um, where the fuel tank used to be, and another row of 24, also where the fuel tank used to be. Yeah, that's more than one leaf pack that replaces the fuel tank, and then there's going to be stacks of four below the spare wheel well. Uh, four stacks of four, so another 16 cells uh, there. And then eight cells um, in the exhaust tunnel. That's, I think, what I can comfortably fit in there. And if I'm not entirely wrong, that should be 78 cells all in place. And with the total <coughs> of 96 um, cells, we uh, will be left with 14 cells that have to find space somewhere in the... Um, engine compartment. We should have plenty of space there. We get this service interrupter right here that I tend to use as well and the switches. Okay, one more detail we can see here is that a number of cells has uh, these rods uh, sticking out and the cells with rods also look a bit different on the back So you can whoop, put an M6 Screw in this hole. Well, sorry about it not focusing And that Will enable us to use some screw some angles in the back and Yeah, screw the batteries tightly in place and apart from that there's four M8 rods interconnecting all cells mechanically. So that should be uh, pretty rugged. Okay, and then the final topic is BMS. So the Leaf's original BMS has got tons of inputs. And you can see that each of the pole connector assemblies has a wire harness with all these spaghetti wires being routed through here. So they're running a wire from each individual cell into the BMS, and that uh, probably works well for their production environment, but the way I'm going to distribute uh, the cells in the car, um, it's definitely not the preferred way to run little spaghetti wires um, all over the car. So I do consider just uh, dumping this one and using uh, the BMS or an updated version of the BMS I'm currently using in the Polo because that works rather well. Okay, now an update from six feet under. Uh, so this is that exhaust tunnel. It spans like 1.5 meters front to back and like this starting part here is uh, not really feasible for, for placing batteries. I'll probably put some of the switch gear there and some miscellaneous stuff. 
And here, this is where the fuel tank used to be. You can see the connector for the fuel pump and the fuel gauge. And it's actually quite small on camera, but it's, it's pretty large. And then here is the area below the spare wheel well. It's raining and I'm getting wet. Okay, so <laughs> this has got to give you an idea because I want to go back inside. Big update from the front. So this is set exhaust tunnels where some cells will uh, be living. And yeah, I put the original gearbox back in place, <coughs> which I'm going to have to connect to the leaf motor. And I'm having a, a piece made for that. Original drive shafts back in place. Mm, anything else? No, now let's go inside. Okay, so I hope this little driveway and basement update was interesting for you. Uh, if it is, please like, share and subscribe and consider supporting my activities on Patreon. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.